Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Welcome back everybody. We're here live at uh, AWS reInvent 2014 in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. I'm joined in this segment by Kabir Shahani. He's the VP of Technology and Applications at IMS Health. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so tell us a little bit about IMS Health. Uh, I understand a data services company and software. Tell us a little bit about it uh, for our audience who might not be familiar with it. Yeah, IMS, IMS Health is a leading provider of technology and services across the healthcare and life science continuum. Uh, we have three major pieces to our business, lots of components to it, but essentially a large data uh, mm -hmm. business that we roll up uh, across 100,000 data suppliers. We have a 10 and a half petabyte proprietary database of prescriptions and physician reference information, mm -hmm. and health outcomes research, and a lot of really interesting uh, healthcare data. Uh, a lot of services, uh, kind of a second pillar of our business uh, to help our customers get value from that data, uh, to uh, you know, enable uh, reporting and analytics for our customers. Mm -hmm. And the third more uh, recent part of our company is our software business, mm -hmm. uh, where we have a suite of commercial applications to enable our customers uh, across their commercial operation. Okay, uh, interesting, so all that, all that health data is coming from various sources around around the country, around the world, whether right. it's, uh, you mentioned prescription data, what are the other right. kind of data sources that you're you're gathering into this, what do you, you say, t how, how big was the database, 10 petabyte? Yeah, it's a over 10 petabyte proprietary database. Wow. Yeah, it's a really interesting business. It's uh -huh. been around for 60 years, uh, the kind of operating in over 100 countries. So mm -hmm. um, we have a very unique perspective and a unique set of assets that we've developed mm -hmm. uh, to be able to really understand uh, prescription trends, to be able mm -hmm. to understand sales volumes, to understand uh, health outcomes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having a number of um, anonymized patient lives in our database mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so you know, we work with a lot of uh, Governments, we work with a lot of, of course, uh, healthcare and life science companies mm -hmm. uh, across the continuum. Yeah, so so let's dig into the, what your customers are doing with with the data. So they're. Right. Uh, you know, probably performing some type of analytics. What are the different types of, of companies? You mentioned pharmaceuticals, you mentioned yeah. governments. What are some of the some of the use cases that uh, kind of get you guys excited? Yeah, and, and the area that we're really focused on now is the software and how that mm -hmm. lights up the data. So, uh, you know, we have five applications uh, in, our, in our quote unquote software business. Uh, the first is something we call IMS1, which actually is a full uh, data warehousing uh, type capability with master data management, a uh, library of APIs to push mm -hmm. and pull data, our data and third party data, uh, to be able to get uh, a lot of interesting insights into uh, both prescription trends as well as sales information mm -hmm. uh, that our customers are looking for. Uh, so IMS1 provides all that underlying infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then alongside that, we have four uh, business applications. Uh, mm -hmm. One is a multi-channel marketing suite, so our customers are actually using our data to understand, well, what physicians should they be targeting mm -hmm. uh, for certain types of information that they want to be able to, to have a conversation with that physician about, uh, using the data to be able to understand, well, how is uh, certain marketing campaigns actually influencing changes in mm -hmm. prescription patterns mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately sales. Uh, so that's, a, that's really around our, our multi-channel marketing product. Uh, we have a full CRM product as well mm -hmm. uh, that our customers are able to put in the hands of all their sales reps to have a, a really closed loop between all the marketing activity, all the actual prescription activity mm -hmm. that comes through our, our data sets, as well as then what type of conversation the sales mm -hmm. rep wants to have uh, you know, with a particular physician. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a social media sentiment analysis and an analytics oh, okay. tool. Um, in healthcare and life science, it's actually really interesting uh, if there's what's called an adverse event. So, you know, you take a drug, you say, oh, I got a rash, and you tweet about it. That's actually an adverse event that the drug company has to report to the FDA. Mm -hmm. We have a full com social media compliance product that helps our customers actually be able to play in social media because ah. they can manage that, that uh, compliance and regulatory uh, constraints. Mm -hmm. And then lastly is uh, Nexus Performance, which is a, a really rich BI and analytics product we're developing uh, using AWS as the infrastructure behind it to be able to uh, help our customers really look at sales and product uh, uh, type information across all mm -hmm. of their businesses globally. So you mentioned that's a relatively new line of business? Correct. Uh, so, so what, 
made you, what, what drove that decision to get into the applications business um, in addition to obviously you're, you're, you've, got, you've got the data, you're providing APIs and services so people can integrate into that their own environments, right. but at some point you made the decision, well, we want to build our own applications to help people. Why, why that decision? Yeah, you know, it's, um, and, and I'm, I was not at the company at the time and I sort of uh, came into the company because of that and, and I think it's, you know, taking a, a really customer driven approach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the really interesting things that I see happening and, and I think as a company we're seeing happening in the industry is, you know, most enterprise software companies are trying to figure out how to be data companies, right? <laughs> They're building really interesting software applications, collecting data over a long period of time, and then trying to enable new use cases for those customers because they have data. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on the other side of that, yeah, where right. we've been a data company for a really long time, and now we can very rapidly build exciting software products around mm -hmm. that data. Uh, and and I, when you look at the way in which our customers are trying to get value, you know, the raw data itself doesn't do a lot for the customer mm -hmm. until it's embedded in an application or until mm -hmm. there's services around it. Right. And we've historically provided a, a lot of uh, insight around the data and a lot of great services to help our customers get value from the data they're buying from us and the intrinsic value that the data has. Um, the holy grail is, of course, being able to just give them a software application that does right. that. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real interesting shift for us because as we're building these very sophisticated software products that are giving our customers access to the tools to get value, they're actually also getting more value out of our services teams too because and oftentimes software is not enough and you do need some expert services around it mm -hmm. uh, to ensure you can get the most value across your it's, enterprise. Well it's interesting because you know, in, uh, I cover the big data space for Wikibon and you know, we've been covering the Hadoop market and the NoSQL market and all these new technologies that are coming uh, to the fore, really both though on the infrastructure, on the container level, you're, you're right. putting data in there, you're processing, you're transforming it. Then you've got the analytics layer, but ultimately it's applications where things get, people make decisions, actions get triggered, where, where real business happens is when you get an application. We haven't right. seen a lot of packaged big data applications out there in the market. Right, and right. You see, you're right, you've seen the application providers, the SAPs and the Oracles of the world, they're trying to adapt to this new world and, and, and add more analytic capabilities into their package applications. Right. Uh, but it's interesting seeing a data provider essentially saying, well, why don't we flip this on its head and, and we provide the yeah. application. Yeah, and, and I think we're unlocking a ton of value for yeah. our customers by doing that. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you, you raise an interesting point. I, I really think there's another way we're going to start to see of application focused uh, companies and products mm -hmm. uh, based on all these great technologies. I mean, the, the energy here at reInvent is palpable. I mean, you can yeah. just tell there's so many interesting things happening. People are really excited about what they're working on. Uh, customers are glomming onto these technologies because they know they need the kind of uh, power and capability a lot of these products are, are bringing, mm -hmm. but there's, there's still some gaps. And companies like IMS Health and many others, I'm sure, are going to start to see the value, and we're already seeing the value, in being able to use a lot of these you know, leading edge technologies, but doing it in a way where, because we understand our customers so deeply, mm -hmm. we can address customer use cases at a, at a very you know, one foot level, mm -hmm. uh, instead of having to go through all the energy of figuring out, well, how do I use Hadoop and what are the right ways I should be using Hadoop? Right. We'll just give you the application. It might be using Hadoop in the back end, it might not. It doesn't right. really matter. And a business person doesn't care, right? right. They want the answer. So, That's right. so tell us a little bit about your relationship with AWS. Are you guys, as, as we've heard the phrase this week, all in on AWS? So what what yeah. components of AWS are you using to support your business? What's the relationship? Yeah, there? so we signed up, I think we're the sixth enterprise acceleration partner with AWS, and mm -hmm. you know that relationship has been really important for us because number one, I think there's a, a lot of strong cultural alignment. Um, what's really important for us as a company that operates at the scale that we do and has the depth of relationship with our customers that we do is, you know, we can't afford to have any, I would say, mission critical IP-like components in somebody else's platform, mm -hmm. right? AWS for us is really rich infrastructure, it's very powerful infrastructure, uh, but we need to maintain our own proprietary platform. Yep. And AWS, uh, not only techno technologically, but philosophically gives us that flexibility, right? Andy says himself, you know, we're, we're the building blocks for you. And that's exactly what type mm -hmm. of relationship we want. So I think that's, that's super important. Um, we're also able to work together to ensure that we're building the right capability for our customers. And so our sales teams and our go-to-market teams are actually working together, talking to CIOs, mm -hmm. uh, having conversations about the types of capabilities, because you know, every time we win, AWS wins. So you know, it's sort of like this great relationship mm -hmm. where you know, we can do what's right for the customer and build a great solution for the customer and build great software products for the customer, and the customer wins, we win, AWS wins, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's really exciting to see that relationship well, take place. Well, dig in a little bit more in, uh, around the things that AWS allows you to do that you potentially couldn't do before. Is it mainly around agility? Is it, is it around just getting rid of that headache of dealing with the infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is just being able to focus on the things that matter, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the, 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 to me, the infrastructure is now just a utility. 
and it, it, it's, mm. and I think that for Amazon to turn into a utility company is fantastic, right? I'd love to be the power company. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think that that's, um, I think that's great, and it lets us focus on building some great software, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is a, a huge piece of it. Um, it also lets us scale really, really quickly, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we all know the time it takes to go buy your own hardware, provision your own data center, all the steps it takes to do that, um, and, and especially at the scale at which we're operating, the in-country data centers are super important. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we know that AWS is on that train and they're focused on rolling out new data centers and new regions uh, on a very consistent basis, mm -hmm. you know, that again enables us mm -hmm. to focus in the areas that account for our customers. I think uh, kind of related to that point, uh, the whole issue around privacy and regula regulations, especially in healthcare and yeah. the type of data you're dealing with. Were there any concerns you know, when you're looking at AWS in terms of, well, we've got to be very careful here around, around our, our uh, compliance. Right. Um, does AWS help, hurt? How do you deal with compliance issues when you're running on top of a platform yeah, like AWS? We, we, as we went through this assessment of first you know, determining if it makes sense or not to, to use a third party cloud, which you know, I think it's in the software business, it's a, it's a done decision for everybody. It mm -hmm. makes total sense. Um, but particularly, you know, this, this level of relationship mm -hmm. and, and this type of move, uh, we have to go extraordinarily deep in the assessment on security and compliance and all the processes around that. And you know, we're fortunate to have a lot of experts inside mm -hmm. of IMS Health around that, and mm -hmm. we could, we could use, our colleagues could, could do that assessment. Um, I, I think you know, the, the other piece to that is, uh, is how it's changed over time. So uh, you know, 36 months ago, uh, when I used to talk to a, a, you know, a potential customer or a CIO and uh, have a dialogue about our infrastructure, uh, and if we said, hey, we're, we're using AWS, there'd be some you know, questions. And mm -hmm. there'd be a, it wouldn't be, a, be a, okay, well that, that's interesting, tell me more about that, I want to learn more, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Uh, the last six months, it's a huge benefit. I mean, it's amazing how fast this industry has evolved where when I spend a lot of my time talking to our customers and to the CIOs of large and mid-sized healthcare and life science companies, and pretty much every time I've had that conversation over the last six months, it's been a huge positive. Mm -hmm. uh, because AWS is investing the resources and focusing in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, now, one issue with AWS, of course, in terms of their partners is, you know, AWS kind of takes a step back they look at what all their partners are doing, and sometimes they say, well, there's some partners doing some very valuable things, maybe we should get into that business ourselves. So you got to be, you, it's, it's an interesting relationship. How do you view that? So you know, I think that's an issue on the infrastructure side. Mm -hmm. So if IMS Health was an infrastructure company, and you'd be more you know, concerned about that? Yeah, that, that would be something to think about. We are in completely different businesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are, a, we are a, a technology and services company, we build software products. If Amazon starts to build software products that they sell to business users, that'll be an issue. <laughs> that'll be a pretty big concern. <laughs> Uh, but the conversations I've had with the team, I don't, I don't see that on the roadmap. Yeah. I don't think that's the business that Amazon intends to play. Um, and, and, I, and, and I think that it, it create, lets us each focus on our, our relative strengths and, and do what's right for the customer. Yeah. Um, just a couple more minutes, so I want to give you the last word. I mean, just, just you know, talking to our audience out there, you mentioned a little bit, but talk about the vibe here at this show. Um, yeah. And, and um, is this your first reinvent? It is. It's my first yeah. reinvent. I mean, just you know, your impressions of this show. I mean, for the, for the folks at home who aren't here. Yeah. Uh, what's it? What's it really like on the ground? Yeah, I'm. I, I'm really happy that, that I'm here. I'm really happy we came. Uh, I'm happy we had the announcement with the team. Uh, this conference, it's really more than just about Amazon. It's more about than more than just about AWS. And I think the team at AWS probably wants it that way. Um, there's just so much innovation happening. There's so many ideas being shared. There's so much of a focus on, um, a, a, it's like craftsmen very excited about their craft, is how I would describe <laughs> the audience and the group. Uh, and so what I'm, what I'm finding in the hallway conversations and walking the floor and sitting in the sessions is there's just a, a, an, an intent focus on talking about new technology and how to use it, how to get value and sharing best practices very community oriented, uh, very collaborative. Uh, I think exactly the way that, that these types of shows should be run. It sounds like you'll probably be back next year. I think so. <laughs> Great, think and, ho so. and hopefully we'll see you on theCUBE then as well. Sounds Kabir great. Kabir Shahani uh, from IMS Health, thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching guys, stick with us. We'll be right back after this short break live at AWS reInvent.